Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. It turns out that these greasy, grimy bags full of leftover banana peels, moldy loaves of bread, and old wilted lettuce is a valuable resource that can be turned into renewable energy and compost. That's what Harvest Power does in British Columbia's lower mainland. Meet Francina Sol Maori, the general manager of Harvest Power site in Richmond, British Columbia. It's a technology that is relatively new in North America. This was one of the first facility, high solids facility in North America, but there are many examples of them in Europe. Harvest Power collects 200,000 tons of organic waste a year. About 40,000 tons of the waste is food waste that runs through its anaerobic digester. First, it's shredded, then mixed with a little yard waste and pushed into long, airtight tunnels where the waste is biochemically degraded into organic acids. The solid waste is removed and the organic liquids are fed into the digester. In the digester, bacteria goes to work producing methane that's collected and burned in a one megawatt combined heat and power plant. It makes a lot of sense. So to divert food waste and organic material from landfills so that we can extract all what is good for it and produce renewable energy and useful products instead of just being dumped. After the anaerobic digestion process, what's left are the solids that are now ready for composting. That's where Jeff Hill comes in. He's the manager of the compost division at Harvest Power. But there's still uh, a large volume, large mass of uh, solid organic matter that is an end product of the anaerobic digestion, but uh, is not yet compost. So we actually need to go and process it again through an aerobic system, which is the entire composting operation, to produce uh, a valuable end product. The digestate material left after the anaerobic digestion process is gross, sticky stuff. It's now added to the compost side of the operation. In total, Harvest Power processes 200,000 tons a year of organic waste in partnerships with 13 different surrounding municipalities. The scale is immense. We're doing 100 or more than 100 trucks per day, covering 30 or 40 acres. So the challenge is managing to the scale of a centimeter on the operation that's very large. And really what that means is every day getting, getting one's hands dirty. So knowing what's happening on the site on a handful by handful basis. So it's just diligent management and attention to detail. Taking organic waste to harvest power costs less than taking it to the landfill. And next January, it will be illegal to dump organic waste in a landfill, thereby increasing the supply of waste for harvest power. Building integrated facilities like this makes a lot of sense. Harvest Power makes money in three ways. One, through tipping fees, about $50 a ton. Two, selling compost at about $20 a yard. And three, selling electricity to the grid. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. The sloppiest, gooeyest waste is being turned into new soil for your yard and electricity to turn the lights on. Check out our blog for more information on turning food waste into power. We've also got photos, a podcast, and links to great resources at greenenergyfutures.ca.